Hi there, I'm Roger Lee from Art Framer in Kelowna, and I'd like to introduce you to Linda Norman. Okay, so you wake up in the morning, and you go into your studio. What happens? Like in every, what are the, what are the steps that end up in a painting? Ah, uh, well, most of the paintings come out of my imagination, mm -hmm. my brain. I don't, I mean, I, I dream of painting. Yep. Uh, but I, I very rarely dream of a finished product right. or where I want it to end up. But so for me, the, the actual process of putting the, the pigment in the water together yeah. is is the magical part. Right. So um, I do paint with uh, a particular brand of watercolor. I use right. Daniel Smith uh, Fine Art watercolors. I love the pigmentation, the way they're, they're formulated. Uh, they do the things that I know they will do. Right. I've learned about them over the years. Yeah. And um, I have them in a, in a paint uh, box. Yeah. So they each have their own little wells. And it's um, and I, I use a spray bottle. I mist it down as soon as I go down to my studio because I want those paints to be lovely and luscious yeah. and juicy. Yeah. And so um, I will spray them down with a mister. I will go about getting my brushes uh, out of my little pack, and I have a couple of favorite brushes that we can talk about later at yeah. some point as well. Um, I think maybe on my channel I will do some some Good features on, some on, little on some of the brushes and then the products uh, yeah. because they make a huge difference to me. Right. To me. Also. And uh, so yeah, I will go get my paper. If I'm working on paper, sometimes I'll paint on canvas, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that in a second too. It's a little bit different, yeah. um, and I'll spray the paints down again lightly, right. just give them a gentle waking up. Yeah. Um, fill up my little containers of water, one for for cleaning the brush and one for clean water, and I'll sit. Yeah. I have a, a table about this height and a, and a seat about this height, and. Um, that's most comfortable for me. Yeah. Some painters like to have a bit of an angle right. uh, so that there's gravity working. And if I'm doing a vignette or something where I want the paints to run, yes. then I will, I will, the... I can put a pencil or a brush behind and, and let that happen. Let gravity Exactly. Work, yeah. um, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get my paper and I use, um, unless I'm doing a small greeting card, I will use 100% cotton paper. And that's mm -hmm. important to right. me because it, it allows my pigments to do what yes. I know they can do. Yeah, cotton reacts very differently. Absolutely a game changer for any, any watercolor artist who, um, who wants to take their work to the next level yeah. uh, is to work with 100% cotton paper. And there's several, several brands out there and, and you'll, you know, you'll have to work through and find out which one feels best because yeah. everybody's different. Yeah. We hold our brushes different. Uh, we sit differently. There's different angles. There's different, different appreciation of water to pigment ratio. Right. Um, and then, um, if I'm painting a landscape, I will wet the paper randomly. I'd, I'd like to leave some dry spots because that will leave white spots yeah. on, my, on my painting. That's right. And I can fill them in later. Uh, I don't use white paint. Mm -hmm. The paper itself comes right. through to bring that whiteness and that, that uh, sparkle yeah. to a painting. Yeah. And then I'll start applying the paint. Um, right. If I'm doing a landscape, I will put my uh, my little bit of gold, quinacridone gold, and then some nice Mayan dark blue, and yeah. that sort of brings my sky to life. Right. And then uh, my brushes, typically, as I said, aren't aren't what normally are considered watercolor standard brushes. So I use uh, wide brushes, mm -hmm. one inch, two inch, right. hake uh, or hake brushes. I have a couple of specialty brushes from an artist out of Montreal. His name is Michael Solovyev. Okay. Uh, and that's again a wide brush, but it comes to a very, very um, chiseled point. Oh, good. So yes. you can paint big washes, but you can also paint flagpoles or, or tree yes, branches with it. Um, and then I have another set of brushes that I bring in from uh, Tracy Levinson out of Seattle, and he, oh. he hand makes each one individually out of recycled and repurposed material. Yeah. Okay, so you've had time to really source the exceptional. Uh, yeah, so three brushes for basically you. for pretty much anything I'm painting on paper. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll um, get that on, I'll take a heavier brush and, and just put some color on and, and allow it to, to flow out. Right. And from there generally I'll see, and I'm, I'm, I love landscapes. I grew up mm -hmm. with, you know, in, well, in yeah. the local hills with my dad and mom yeah. camping and fishing and, and yeah. you know, 
That's well, for, the, for those of you who don't know, the Okanagan Valley, which is where we live, Kelowna right. is, is one of the towns in this valley. It is an extraordinary valley with some enormous lakes that run great lengths north and south yeah. and hillsides each, each way. Um, beautiful place. And for a landscape artist, it's so inspiring, yeah, so inspiring, yeah. and and um, you know I've come to know since my watercolor journey started, and through social media, some incredible artists around the world, yeah. and um, you know have have been told many times that that particular painting reminds them of their home. Ah, uh, yes. You know. Yep some universality about it. So, yeah, whether it's it's something that I've I've seen physically, you know, as a, as a young person growing up or maybe I've astral traveled and and visited yes. some. Okay. Again, the dream world. They're yeah, right. It, around, it could be. Uh, it could be seeing things from a different angle. Yeah. yeah. And I don't uh, you know, I don't worry about specifics. Mm -hmm. um, most of what I do is is dealing with shapes and and colors and shading. So, you'll know that that's a mountain. You'll know that that's a tree. You'll know that that's, you know. Yeah. I, I find your work to be very atmospheric. Oh, thank you. It's got the elements of mm -hmm. water and uh, yes. rock and hillside and cloud and air and uh, condensation even and <laughs> fog and light. Beautiful stuff. But I, I keep telling people as I describe your work, to me there's so much of a timelessness. Your mm. paintings are often like a time before the dinosaurs. <laughs> like, it, 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 it's extraordinary. You know, a window into a world that could have been any time millions of years ago. Some of that. my paintings have titles that uh, that come from um, Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings. Oh, good, yes. You know, course. and yeah. so I've sort of played on that a little bit. This particular painting is not on paper, it's on canvas. That's right. It's on a, a, a two-inch deep exhibition canvas. Mm -hmm. That is um, a different process altogether. And I take uh, watercolor paint from the tube, yeah. and put it on a little little tiny palette, right. just blobs of it, and then I'll take a credit card or a palette knife, mm -hmm. and uh, once I've wetted my canvas, and again I, I, I wet the canvas randomly, yeah. I don't want the whole thing saturated in water, so randomly, and then I'll, I'll drag the pigments oh, across, yeah. sometimes one or two at a time, yeah. um, so maybe all three at a time, and then... Um, let the water on the canvas do what it needs yeah, to do. and it behaves so differently from paper. It does, and many of the pigments yeah. that I use are granulating, and oh. that means that they will migrate and, and do their own um, movement. Yeah, and as they dry, they'll, they'll again change it further. Yeah. Absolutely, and then there are pigments, for example, like a quinacridone gold, right. which is um, it's, it's going to push the other pigments right out of the way. Oh, really? And take over and do its own mm. magic. So I, I usually leave that till the last. But that's yeah. basically the process. Uh, often it's what you take out. Yes. That uh -huh, provides right. the finishing touches. Yep. So whether it's with um, with this one, I didn't do much pulling away on the shoreline, but in the cloudy areas, a, a damp paper towel and just lifting out some of the pigment yes. to to um, make the, the mists and the clouds a little more uh, visible. And, uh, and then that's that.